Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Chris Kowalski, orthopedic spine surgeon at the Orthopedic Institute of North Texas. Today I want to talk about the surgical treatments for one of the most common conditions I see in the office, and that is cervical radiculopathy. This condition is most commonly treated by one of two procedures, an ACDF procedure or a cervical disc replacement. ACDF is the most common procedure performed when treating cervical radiculopathy. The name of the procedure describes exactly what happens during the surgery. The surgeon will enter the patient's neck from the front or anterior with an approximately two inch incision. The voice box, also called the larynx, and the swallowing tube, the esophagus, are moved to the side in order to access the bones and the discs of the cervical spine, as seen here. The level where the disc and bone spurs are pressing on the nerves is accessed and the disc and bone spurs are removed. This relieves all the pressure off the nerves in order to decrease or eliminate the pain passing from the neck down into the arms and into the hands. After relieving the pressure on the nerves, a piece of bone material is, in, is inserted into the space where the disc was in order to allow the bones to heal or fuse together. A metal plate and screws are placed into the bones and uh, screws are used to lock them in to fully heal them together. After surgery, patients are placed in a cervical collar to give extra support and stability. Patients are seen back in the doctor's office at three weeks after surgery to check the incision and x-rays. And if everything looks good, the patient will be allowed to discontinue the cervical collar. Patients are typically maintained on restrictions after the surgery, including no lifting with the arms or hands, and no strenuous work for six weeks after surgery. Now, let's talk about the artificial disc replacement. Disc replacement is a minimally invasive, motion-preserving uh, procedure that is also an option in certain patients who have cervical radiculopathy. The procedure is similar to an ACDF in that the cervical spine is accessed to the front of the neck and the disc is removed in a similar fashion. But instead of placing bone graft where the disc was, a metal and plastic device is inserted into the disc space to preserve the motion at that level, as you can see. Research seems to suggest that patients who are able to return to activity slightly faster than an ACDF procedure, as there is no need to wait for the bone to fully heal with a disc replacement. After surgery, patients are placed in a cervical collar to give extra support and stability to the neck, and patients are seen back in the doctor's office at three weeks after surgery to check the incision and x-rays. If all looks good, the patient will be allowed to progress activities as tolerated. Lastly, let's talk about the risks. No surgery is without risk, and neck surgery does carry some significant risks, but fortunately these risks are low. The most common risks that nearly all patients should expect after this type of procedure is having trouble swallowing and having a hoarse voice. These symptoms do resolve in nearly all patients within a few weeks after the surgery. Other less common risks include, but are not limited to, bleeding, infection, damage to surrounding structures in the neck, such as vessels, nerves, esophagus, or trachea, spinal cord injury leading to paralysis, whether it's partial or complete or temporary or permanent, spinal fluid leakage, hoarseness, and difficulty swallowing, as I mentioned. To summarize, cervical radiculopathy is a common condition that typically responds well to non-operative treatments. For those patients who continue to have symptoms, surgery is a good option. The two most, op the mo two most common operations to treat cervical radiculopathy are the ACDF, anterior cervical discectomy and fusion, as well as the cervical disc replacement. Both surgeries remove the bad disc and bone spurs, but the fusion uses bone graft, a metal plate, and screws to lock the bones together so they grow together, and a disc replacement preserves motion. If you have symptoms of cervical radiculopathy, please don't hesitate to call and make an appointment so we can discuss, discuss the best treatment options for you.